I call uh, Reno Terakadne. Tanakwe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tianakwe. I'm pleased to uh, speak at the first reading uh, of this bill, sir. And as my uh, colleagues have uh, mentioned in their contributions, sir, we are supporting uh, this bill. Uh, but, sir, we do not want to, uh, you know, see that come the 28th of June, uh, the Maui gas platform switching off, and uh, in the middle of winter, uh, you know, families, businesses around the country who are reliant on our energy supply from, uh, you know, being shut out. So, of course, sir, we are supporting uh, this bill. However, however, sir, yet again, we are unfortunately having to deal with cleaning up the sloppy, shoddy workmanship of this national government in terms of uh, in passing legislation, which is absolutely full of uh, problems, uh, sir. And uh, this is just another patch-up job that this House is now having to do, patching up shoddy, shoddy workmanship by this government. And who have been the architects? And I know Mr Ducey referred to the great leadership from the ministers that have been ushering in this and uh, its predecessor primary priests uh, of legislation. Well, sir, uh, obviously we had the uh, Dr Nick Smith, who was uh, the uh, promoter of the primary bill, which we are amending, sir, through this bill. Uh, and we know uh, that Dr Smith introduced this bill, but he wasn't able to usher it through, sir, uh, because we know that, unfortunately, he had to go into self-imposed exile uh, for uh, the uh, unfortunate uh, Bronwyn Puller fiasco. But I, I don't want to go there, sir. I just want to say that how many hands has this piece of legislation actually passed through? And it's been numerous, sir. So we had, we had Dr Smith. We had Dr Smith, and then it passed on to uh, the Honourable Amy Adams. And so Mrs Adams rushed the, the primary piece of legislation through. Um, the select committee, good work that they did, um, made substantial amendments to the, the, the primary piece of legislation. And then in the committee stage, Mrs Adams dumped a 14-page SOP with further amendments. So, sir, that... Um, is not very good lawmaking. And then what happens, sir? One month after the passage of the primary piece of legislation, which we are amending uh, yet again through this bill, one month after that, we have another amendment that is put through the House, sir, and that was the uh, Marine Legislation Bill. And who was the sloppy tradesman from the national government that, uh, uh, that was leading that piece of legislation, sir? Well, it was none other than the, uh, the Honourable Mr Jerry Brownlee. And so, sir, you know, uh, we, it's been passed on from minister after minister, shoddy workmanship all the way through, so, but the amendments were passed through, uh, further amendments were passed to this piece of legislation uh, through uh, the Marine Legislation Bill, which was only just passed um, not so long ago. And, sir, here we are in the 51st Parliament, and now we are having to deal with, yet again, another amendment to this piece of legislation uh, through uh, a, what could be arguably a stitch-up with Shell Todd to ensure that they have enough time to run through the uh, decision-making processes so they can be issued uh, with a marine consent and thereby be able to carry on uh, under the um, exclusive uh, economic zone under the primary bill, sir. So, sir, this is shoddy workmanship from this national government. It has been going on and it has been passed through minister after minister. Uh, Mr Ducey talked about a, this, this uh, legislation being a maturing of, of the bill, uh, of, of, the legis of the environmental legislation, but, sir, it just highlights how shambolic and rushed the process was in terms of the passage of this bill and that's evidenced by the amendments after amendments after amendments that we're having to do not uh, and it has been signaled sir that there are more amendments in the pipeline uh, no uh, pun intended there sir but there are <laughs> but sir so we, we can expect more to important time of this house being spent on corrective 
pieces of legislation to correct um, what should have been picked up right at the start. And unfortunately, that's what, uh, that is the so-called leadership that we are getting from this government th through uh, a range of ministers. Uh, each, uh, I think when you do that, sir, you're actually um, creating a, a Frankenstein piece of legislation because you're having to chop, change, insert things, um, do deals over here, maybe try and do something to appease another, another mining company or another sector or industrial interests. Sir, that is not good lawmaking and it's definitely not good government. And uh, so, sir, I want to, <laughs> sir, I want to pass on now to, um, you know, looking at what this legislation does. So this legislation, sir, allows Shell Todd, who supply um, a significant supplier of gas to our households and energy, the ability to see to the completion of uh, their marine consent application uh, in order for them to uh, continue their operations. Uh, and so they've applied to the Environmental uh, Protection Authority for this consent. Uh, and, sir, for a major corporation of this country, you know, uh, they must have an army of lawyers and the best law firms advising them. It is, really strikes me how incompetent they must be uh, through not actually applying for their marine consent application to the EPA much earlier. And it alarmed me, sir, uh, when I was listening to uh, Mr Hughes, that apparently the government, the Cabinet, signed off on this special piece of legislation exclusively for uh, petroleum exploration companies. Cabinet gave the approval, evidently, three days prior to Shell Todd even applying for their marine consent to the EPA, sir. So um, it, it's, it's, it's poor governance, but it's also uh, poor of this government to be able to be trying to do special deals with uh, what are significant infrastructure companies and energy suppliers for our country. And it's uh, not the way that we should be running our country, sir. Uh, that is uh, of great concern. And so I want to uh, now, if we get back to what hasn't been spoken for, I believe, in this debate, sir, and that um, what we are missing here is that this legislation as a whole does fall short about protecting our environment. And ultimately, that is what we want to achieve and uh, what this legislation was meant to achieve. Uh, however, through the successive amendments that we have had to uh, uh, put through uh, this house, uh, sir, it, it, it behoves me to say that this piece of legislation, again, is, is unfortunate. Uh, we want to see the gas continue to flow, but we recognise that our environment is important. Uh, we have the fourth to fifth largest exclusive economic zone in our country, and uh, yet there is you know, still a lot that we do not understand about. Uh, our, our marine environment and our marine jurisdiction. And I believe, sir, that uh, is largely a big... Uh, a, a lot of the issues around the problems... the problems that we are having with uh, the fact that significant applications are going in for seabed mining and the like from companies like Chatham Phosphate, uh, going through... Uh, jumping through the regulatory hoops that have been put in front of them, uh, and yet... They come to a situation where the EPA has made a decision and uh, now we are having to, so we understand, uh, we've heard that uh, another amendment is now being proposed to this legislation which will accommodate and maybe uh, allow Chatham Rock Phosphate to continue with their activities. And so, sir, you know, we are now seeing this knee-jerk reaction from the government uh, to, to respond to the, the cries from the commercial sector. And uh, who, must, who uh, 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 is that? That is to the detriment, sir, uh, the people who are actually involved in these processes. And I think of uh, the iwi of the West Coast uh, who, have, who have valid objections to the activities of uh, Todd Energy, sir, and all the other objectors. They are not being respected uh, in terms of the EPA process. It's a rubber stamp, but still we need to make sure that uh, we put good law in place. Kia ora.